Thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Adam Ferguson, orthopedic surgeon. I specialize in foot and ankle, and I'm also part of the Connecticut Orthopedic Institute at Mid-State Medical Center. Again, thank you for joining me. I'm going to be talking today about foot and ankle problems and specifically arthritis of the foot and ankle and kind of the old way which we did things and now the new way and new advances in treatment that can help improve your pain and improve your function. What I'll be talking to everyone about is the problems associated with arthritis of the ankle, the treatment options both from a conservative standpoint as well as ultimately if those fail, surgical intervention that can help resolve this issue. So clinically, as far as ankle arthritis is concerned, you know, the first step is diagnosing it and then talking about the ways to treat it. Uh, and that involves a lot of conservative options that are not surgical, but ultimately if all those fail, then we can talk about surgery. And we'll get to all those points in the next coming slides. So when we meet, the first thing I need to understand is where are you, where are you having pain or where do you experience the problem that you're having? I do that through usually a lot of palpation or me pushing on different parts of your foot for example, if you look at the picture on your left, that would be representative of someone with a flatter foot, and those people have a certain subset of problems, versus someone, if you look at the picture on the right, that's representative of a more normal arch or a normal foot, but also can be predisposed to its own set of problems. And again, this is all part of our initial conversation and me getting a, a sense for what your problem is and how I can address it to make it better. So as we're working through understanding your problem, I need to know a couple of things. I need to know not only where does it hurt, but I need to know when it hurts and what types of actions or activities cause you pain. In better understanding this, then I can better help my, make my diagnosis and then better help you get back to function and a level of activity that's pain-free and then you're happy with. So I put this next slide in here specifically as an explanatory slide because when you come and see me, I usually need to get a new set of x-rays and there's a reason for that. The reason is that by taking x-rays with you standing, I can see how your bones and your foot and your ankle align when you're utilizing them. And this also helps me to understand any deformity or problems that are kind of leading to the problem. Did you know that 15% of the population, or about one in every six people, have some form of arthritis? You probably know someone that's had their hip or had their knee replaced because it's a very common surgery. You see at the very bottom there, ankle arthritis is a little bit less prevalent. But obviously, if you have it, it's a very important problem for you and has a very direct effect on your way of life. So I talked about hip and knee arthritis because obviously it's a very common problem and it's very well understood. What we know about the ankle is that the methodology or the pathology is a little bit different and that a lot of ankle arthritis is a direct result of a trauma. Either you sprained your ankle a lot growing up or you broke it 15 or 20 years ago. That's what results in this particular problem and that helps guide my treatment as far as making things better. So I've included some x-rays to give everyone a little bit more of a perspective on what arthritis of the ankle looks like, at least from a radiographic standpoint. The picture on the left is a normal looking ankle. You can see some space preserved in the joint and a reasonably well aligned ankle. And as we start to progress from left to right, you see arthritis getting progressively worse. And on the right, there's essentially no cartilage, le cartilage left because it's bone pressing on bone. And that's the primary generator of the pain. So what I've done here is outline the protocol or the algorithm for treatment of arthritis. And as you can see on the left column there, ultimately my goal is to get you to a level where you're happy and you're functional and you're not having pain. We have a lot of ways to go about that and that's what the treatment options column indicates. Activity modification, injections, therapy, there's a lot of ways to approach it and a lot of times those can be successful. Unfortunately, they're not successful every time and when they aren't, then we have surgery as a, a option to turn to. I've outlined the surgical treatment options available for ankle arthritis. The top option, the arthroscopic debridement, basically means using a camera and a shaver to clean out the damaged portions of cartilage and bone spur if those are symptomatic and painful. If that doesn't succeed or get you to a level where you're comfortable and happy, then the other two options available are more definitive fixations, and that's either an ankle arthrodesis or an ankle fusion or an ankle arthroplasty or a total ankle replacement, and we'll get into both of those more here in a few minutes. Ankle arthroscopy is essentially going into the ankle with a camera and a shaver through two small incisions, and I've outlined that with this picture. I go in there and I clean up any damaged cartilage and damaged bone spurs and get you back to feeling happier. Here you can see a picture of a healthy looking ankle with very smooth and shiny white cartilage. And on this slide you see a rather arthritic ankle without any of that smooth shiny white surface, a lot of damaged structures and probably very painful. Ultimately, if you don't get a appropriate amount of benefit from the ankle arthroscopy, then we have to talk about more definitive procedures, and that's either an ankle fusion or arthrodesis, 
or an ankle replacement arthroplasty. They both have their pros and cons, so we'll start with the arthrodesis. Essentially what is done is I go into the ankle through an open approach usually, and I have to take out all of the damaged cartilage and get the two bones, the talus and the tibia, to grow together as a single unit. That's done with a combination of plates and screws usually. The obvious benefit is that by removing that painful joint, your pain goes away. The downside with that is that by removing that joint, I do take a little bit of the motion of your ankle away. So it's worth noting or bearing in mind that while the ankle fusion is a very successful surgery, there are some ramifications of having the surgery. First off, that top bullet point you can see, you will have to be off of the ankle for two months, and that's because physiologically it takes two months for the bones to grow together, and if they don't, the surgery is not successful and you won't be happy. The other big ramification that we do know about clinically is that if we do fuse the ankle like we do in a fusion, the adjacent joints have to make up for that lack of motion, and those joints will become arthritic ultimately. Here's a picture of essentially what an ankle fusion entails, and this is done, one done with screws, which is a common way for me to do it. Basically, like I said, I'm taking out the damaged bone and cartilage, and then immobilizing everything with a combination of screws and sometimes a plate to allow the body to heal the bones together and eliminate your pain. This is an x-ray of someone who's undergone an ankle fusion. As you can see, the screws are there to help stabilize and immobilize the ankle while the bones heal. Obviously, people hear the word fusion and they have concerns because they think they won't be able to move their foot or their ankle. The body does have a very capable mechanism of compensating for this using the Liz Frank joint and then the transverse tarsal joint. The body can actually maintain about 25 to 50 percent of its pre-fusion motion. And a lot of times, you're giving up painful motion in the ankle that wasn't very helpful or only detrimental to your well-being and compensating elsewhere anyway before the surgery. We just spoke about ankle fusion, so this slide is to outline the long-term ramifications of an ankle fusion. As you can see at the top, you will always have a little bit of a limp. It probably isn't noticeable to most people, but it will be part of your, your gait or your walking pattern. It does require a rather lengthy time of non-weight bearing and immobilization, and then like I said earlier, you will have some arthritis in the adjacent areas or adjacent joints of the foot. Given everything I've just said about ankle replacements, let's look at what patients are saying or patient outcomes. 91% of people are happy with their surgery, and 95% of people would have the surgery again if they needed to. There is a small chance for complications and need for further surgery, but it's unlikely. With all that information, that leads us with the other option, or the new direction in which orthopedics, and specifically foot and ankle orthopedics, is going regarding ankle arthritis. Total ankle replacement, or total ankle arthroplasty, is a surgery where the goal is to reduce your pain while still managing to maintain the motion of the ankle. So you still maintain the function with the benefit of improving your quality of life. I've included an x-ray of what a total ankle arthroplasty looks like, and as you can see, it's a combination of metal, and that space in between the two pieces of metal or very white spots is plastic. The leg doesn't get shorter or any longer, we're just taking out the arthritic bone and replacing it with components. I've included some pictures of essentially what I do interoperatively. So you can see if we're starting in the top left and going counterclockwise, start by measuring the appropriate amount of bone to be resected, and then ultimately the picture in the bottom left is the bone resector prepared for the implant, and then the implant is inserted. Even with great solutions, there's always potential issues, and this is really involving total joint replacements in general. There's always the concern of infection, and there's also the concern that the implants will wear out. But as you can see in the right column, total ankle replacements have been very successful. 90% survival at 10 years and 88% at 15 years is a very promising and positive outcome. So the obvious question at this point is, which one is the right option for me, an ankle replacement or an ankle fusion? So they both have their pros and cons. The obvious benefit of an ankle replacement is you maintain your motion. The unfortunate downside is that there's a chance that down the road those parts may wear out. The positive of the fusion is that once the fusion is healed, the surgery is definitive and that's all the surgery you'll ever need for that joint. So we've covered a lot of information, but a couple of things I want you to take home or remember are arthritis of the ankle is a small but very significant subset of the population. Essentially arthritis is the loss of cartilage. No matter what the cause, it still results in the symptom of pain. My goal is to make that pain better, and there's a lot of very viable and successful treatment options for that. Ultimately, what you have to decide is which is the right option for you, and that's where our conversation, in addition to your wishes, help us make that decision together. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. I'm Dr. Adam Ferguson. I'd be happy to discuss any questions or concerns you have regarding your ankle or your foot and help you getting back to being healthy.